A good evening, everyone. Welcome to the WPA Predator World 8-Ball Men's Championship here. We reached the last 32. And we have the following matchup for you guys. It's the defending champion from last year, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. He takes on the Iceman, Mika Imanen. This is Tim De Reuter in the booth. And alongside me is going to be Eric Hjorlifsson. So we're gonna play a race to 10. Win or break format. So Mika broke the balls, made one, and pretty nice layout to start with. What do you think here, Eric? Yeah, three stripes tied up by the side pocket there. Does he have a solid to open with? That's a good question, too. I mean, he could cut the seven if he really wanted to. I think you gotta go stripes. If the 14 goes to the side, I guess it's okay to go stripes. Would definitely like to open with the 15. The 14 goes. Got on the wrong angle here on the 9, but he'll be okay. He can still use the 12 to get back onto the 14. Just gonna float this in. Also, if he plays a stop shot in on the 12, makes a 14, and he shuts the 11 in the right side pocket, it should still open up. So, unless the 10 goes, but then I would be worrying about not getting on the 11. I think the 11 is the most annoying one, not going to the side and also not to the bottom left. Yeah, he's gonna have to get on a couple small angles here. Typical eight ball play, difference of. Looks like it's going to go 10, 12, 11 now. Well, you could float in the 14 and the 11 in the bottom right. Yeah, pardon me, 14, 10, 11. Yep, small cue ball movement. Got through that nicely. Well, Mika, also known as a great straight pool player himself, so... It's not shy of playing small position shots, but also working with clusters. And when they had the IPT, he was one of the most successful players. I feel like he got third in one of the real big ones. So just some draw for the eight in the side mm -hmm. to start this match with a breaker run. And of course, most of the pressure in the beginning is going to be on Mika because he's playing the biggest, like the hottest player in the world right now. Yeah. So will be very important for him to get with a good start, maybe get two, three, four to start with. Yeah, we're getting to the cream of the crop here in the men's event, so look for lots of breaking runs to be coming. So first blood, Mika Imanen. Has been having a very interesting preparation also for recent events. Also has been having a couple good results. He's been ice bathing with John Mora. I saw that. Times. Actually pretty funny to watch too, like they're shaking. <laughs> so really fun. But also both of them are actually having good results. Both of them are in the last 32 here. They play good in Qatar. The WPA Qatar Open, so. They're doing everything they can to give themselves an edge. Playing a lot, treating themselves good. Also going to the gym still, so. Yep. Yeah, then we have that young man in the left corner. He He's on a huge streak. Last year was even more ridiculous. Crazy streak where he won about five majors. 
Yeah, just all in one year. Other people do this in maybe 10, 20 years. Talk of being Hall of Fame credentials just off one year of play. He's played well in this tournament as well. Yeah, so far from what I've seen Sanchez do, he's been very nice. His break was has been very good so far, so I'm looking forward to see him breaking as well. Yeah, defending champion. Mika going from the middle. Went from the middle the first break. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think he has a very offensive approach for this match. No ball. I just feel like like we had this before. Like I know he breaks the balls good. I know he has the impact. It's just that once in a while you're gonna break and not make a ball, and it's gonna be wide open like it's here. Right. And that might hurt you in this winner break. Yeah, it's it's an offensive strategy. It's a, it's an all or nothing strategy. I'm starting to become a big fan of the. The side rail head-on break, to be honest. It just seems like more balls are going in, too. Pushing balls towards the opposite side pocket. Tough start here, though. I think I would like to go with the stripes. But then this 11 ball is pretty awkward to start with. You don't want to stay along the rail. You can cheat it to the left part of the pocket. Jonas going underneath the 14. He's got enough there. Now, the thing that's going to be interesting is to get on the 15 and to get along that bottom short rail. I think that's the most interesting thing. But there's going to be one good shot, though, if he floats the 14 in, gets a 12, and then cut the 10 in the top left corner and just drop right in between so you have the 15, 9, or the 13. Yeah, I wonder if you consider going down right now. Nothing, just nothing wrong with it. It's tracking that way naturally. Oh, he, he's he got the 10. Yeah. Oh, in that case, now I'm, go I'm going straight over. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, using the 14 going down, I really didn't like it. But if he got... Yeah. Rack's pretty open now. A little small angle on the 15, but he can play it to that to that area off the th 13. Yeah, float the 9 in, go probably two rails. I would go to the short side. I just don't want to accidentally hook myself behind the 8 or the 5. Like, if you play bad speed, the right side you should be guaranteed being on the 15. Yeah, just weighing out the options, whether he wants to go short side or play into the tighter position on the long side. Got there in the nice tight position. Tough parts of the rack are done now. So looking at going to the fir 14 right now. It looked to me that he got a little straight on this 15, so... He's either has to shoot the 14 and 12 in the top right, or he goes a little bit out and have to do more on the 12, more movement. Cue ball kind of died there. Ended up getting him straight in. So that was an option to draw straight back. 14 top left. Yeah. Yeah. Wanted more angle though, so he had to, didn't have to hit as much speed. Just checking if the 14 goes on the side. If it does, that's a big advantage for him. Won't have to move the cue ball as much. Didn't go on the side. Ended up underdrawing it a bit. If he plays directly into the one here, he'll be okay. If it's going off the left side of it, he might be in a bit of trouble. He might hook himself behind the five, yeah? Yeah. Or you do that, bump the one with quite some speed. Good shot. 
excellent shot there. Yeah, couldn't be any better. So two games decided off the break. Yeah, one each. I feel Mika's runout was a little smoother, to be honest, than Sanchez. Yeah, Came up a little short at some balls. Yeah, he had to scramble a little bit there. So maybe a little bit more nerves coming into this match for Sanchez than for Mika. I mean, it all depends on how you look at the match, too. Maybe Mika's just going, well, you know, all the pressure is on him. If I can put some pressure on him, then I can just free roll, basically. It, it's a thing. Yeah, it's a, that, that's how you have to play when you're the underdog. But also applying pressure early. Yeah, win a couple racks before and then... Watch for the two ball to head towards the side pocket here. A little short. Yeah, didn't hit it head on. Cue ball got kicked down there. Still oh no, not drew it straight in the corner. Huh? He still put some good pop on there I think I feel the energy was good just yeah just not straight on the in the face of the ball of caught the some ball. draw though drew it straight in so now interesting we'll have to play from the kitchen from the kitchen outwards now I'm feeling the 8 is tight so that's why he's gonna go with the 11 and then later on you shoot the 13 of the 4 to open up the stripe I don't know what stripe I Looks like it's the nine. Yeah, it is. And then I guess everything is all right. I mean, it's a tough layout, though. So if the 12 is a little strange to get on, I feel. Yeah, 12, 15 are going to have to be shot from tight spots. I'm just wondering, w would he be able to shoot the one and get something on the seven? Because I really like the solids with where the four is. You have the two and the six to open up the eight in case you need to. So if you can get the seven out. That's what he's considering right now. It'd be like doing three things in one shot. Combo in the one. Oh, he's going to shoot quick here. Huh. Combo in the one into the four, trying to open up the seven. Oh, and he just nudges yeah. the seven too, so it's... Yeah. yeah. Actually... He's pretty unfortunate not to open the seven. If he opens the seven, this this rack is as good to be done. Stopped to open up the eight, but yeah, he got on the angle to that he could have done that. Now he's got to open up the seven again. Did that. That's a good good bump though. Yeah, still got a chance to get into the eight here now too. Yeah, now you open up the eight, try to catch the left side of the eight, bump the eight to the rail, come back out. You have the three five, and even if you go further, you have the seven. It's a little straight, but he can definitely get over. Had to power it. He yeah, caught it right in the face. Wow, the straightness of the angle. He just couldn't get enough energy in the cue ball where it was going to stick around that area, but still unlucky to kind of end up like it did. So he's going to go airborne. Three in the corner. Yeah, just had a tough rack there. Did all he could to open it up and got to a point where he did have everything opened up but didn't get a shot on the second, third try at opening up the rack. He has locked up the five, though, with the nine. Of course, Sanchez will have the nine next to it. But you never know how the rack is going to go. If you get straight on the 11 a couple times, then... You won't be able to open up the 9. Yeah, he can use the 14 here to get the angle on the 11. 10 will be down there by itself, but I, I like opening it up early. Yeah. Yeah, 
You could even go the 10 first, go three rails to try to get the same angle on the 11 to open up the nine and have the 14 as a backup. Right. Maybe the cut on the 10 is a little much. It's though. a little thin, a little risky. He can open it up now, but I think he'll get more energy if he plays the cue ball more to the right of the 11. I like to take away the 10 also. Yeah. Go ten. from the 10 over right now and then play the bump. I just feel now if you play the bump and you don't, like the 9 comes in front of the 15, you're most likely not to have the 10. If he follows this, the cue ball will continue forward. But yeah, the 9 could get in between the cue ball and the 15. Now, did that 8 ball really come into play? Or does he have the 15? Because he... I think he's good. Yeah, I feel like he has it. Seven's kind of getting in the way of his positional tracks, but he'll figure out something here. Playing around it. Oh, tried to get on the 10. A little firm, and he's got right in between for both of them, though. Yeah, he can play with a bit of left spin, track it across two rails. Shoot the 10. I think you've got to shoot the 10. Just twice a long rail, but... There. It's in line now. But like you were saying, not quite smooth runouts, you know? Ruiz taking the early, the early lead in this match. To one. Scratch on the break in this rack, but Mika not able to get out. Yeah, left with a tough table. He did all he could. Sometimes that happens in eight ball, you know? So things just keep tying up and you run out of options. Or you play the right shots, but just don't end up getting on something after you break out a ball. thing that got him a little bit, and I'm not saying that it couldn't have happened perfectly, but he ended up shooting, he ended up getting right down to the end of the shot clock on the on the very first breakout shot, and just didn't take quite as enough care on the 7 to bump the 7 out. Yeah, I think if he got the 7 out right away... He would have been a bigger favorite to run the whole rack. Yeah. But he was shooting a very creative shot there. Combo and also he kind of got robbed by the clock he yeah. really had to b speed up and yeah that's I think what if he had more time well that's yeah. what I mean but just managing the time better where he didn't have to rush yeah right? yeah, yeah I mean I understand it because he was shooting an intricate shot and a lot well, of thought going into it also most of the beginning he looked like he was gonna go for stripes right and then at last minute he was like no I gotta go solids but then if I do this and this and this oh wait the clock and then yeah. he started running yeah that was part of it switch switch suits in the middle of the Time allotment. Okay, right in the face. Nothing this time. Try again. Might Not have turned out a little safe, though. Yeah, I have a feeling he didn't leave a shot at all. Mika's going to be able to play safe back, something to do with the 1 2. But to not have a shot after a dry break is a tough roll. Yeah, you just got to freeze the cue ball behind the 1 2 here. All the 15 goes. He has one shot. Or is he messaying a bit? Maybe. 
I like I like the stripes though. Little messe. Good shot. So now the eight ball is tied. That's his only worry though. Of course, he doesn't have really an easy shot from now. We'll have to. I feel he has to shoot the nine and stun the cue ball down for the fourteen. Yeah, just trying to think of what ball he could use to get into the eight. Maybe the yeah. thirteen, but that's a drawing I, I angle. I might, I might finish with the twelve and bank the eight in the side. That's a thought too. If you move the thirteen, you could use the ten to get onto the eight. But at that point, you're only leaving two stripes left after you execute the breakout. So I think you're right. He's going to play a whole track here where he ends up banking the eight in the end. It's either that or during your run you there actually... There he goes. Oh, he was trying to do it right now. And he oh. found a risky, scratch, yeah. Risky, risky. The spin just didn't grab. Like we mentioned a couple times, like even though this is day three so far this week, the cloth is still playing slick. Like it's uh, yeah, it's gonna stay the same the whole week. It didn't release off the second rail. It kind of just played like it, it had less spin on it. Yeah. Yeah. Reese still has to open up the five. He's going to try to control the one in a way where he can play the one second and then play the cue ball into the five eight. If he thinks this combo is a hanger, he could shoot the one and run into the eight. True. He did. Good shot. Open up the one as well. He's in a good spot now. Just going to try to look to move the cue ball the least over the next four, sh four well or five shots. Seven in the corner, stop shot six to the side. Then he's straight on the four. Five, three at the end. One, five, three. Yeah, or... Yeah. Three one five. So yeah, yeah, the the last three balls are kind of. He could go three one five, one five three. The thing I like going one five three is, it doesn't matter how you end up on the three, you are good. If you get any kind of angle on the five, it could be ugly. But he's gonna manage just to play, just to get straight on the five. Yeah. Tough start for Mika. Well, he's having his having his chances though so far. I'm not saying the layouts he's getting are really easy, but scores three one Sanchez Reese, and we're gonna nip out for just a small break. We'll be right back for you guys.
So there we are back. Last 32 match in the WPA Predator World 8 Ball Championship here. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, our defending champion, now up 3 1 over Mika Immonen. We're playing a race to 10. Winner breaks. Crush that one nice and square. Oh, so many balls that hit the side pocket points. Even I think eight. four of them. Yeah. Well, this is where Mika's got to take advantage because going forward, Ruiz is going to run a lot of racks with that break. Yeah, we know that if it starts going well, then he's going to keep keep going. So I feel it's a pretty decent layout, though, and the stripes are pretty nice. Yeah, the nine can play in off the eight. There's room there. I think I start 14, 14, 15 in the side, and then nine go from the 10 to the 11. 13, 12, 8. Yeah, the so 11 is kind of awkward. I, I yeah. would try to take care of it on the early side. What's well, the 9 and the 11 for me that are a little strange? <laughs> yeah, I like it though. 9. After the 15, and use the 10 to go to the arc with the 11. Then you only need one decent shot to get off the real center of the table for either the 13 or the 12. Yeah, and there's barely enough room on the side rail that he can he can get off the side rail on the 13, 12. The six is playing right in the middle of that positional track, but it's manageable. Now, he did push the eight a little awkward, though. Yeah, and he can't take it in the long pocket either. He's going to have to find a way to get on it in the short pocket. Taking a completely different track now. Nothing he won't be able to manage, but he's made everything a little bit more difficult when he pushed the eight there. Yeah, so the way he's played, ni nice play there. He, he was too straight, cool. pounded out of the angle. So the way he's played this, he's going to have a good angle on the 10 to come over for the eight in the shorter pocket. Only blocker there is going to be the seven, but he can just find a way to play well around how that. However he gets on the 10 should be okay. Now he made sure he got a little straighter on this 10 so he can really get in between the 7 and the 8. Yeah. See how aggressively he takes the cue ball at the 8. Could play it all the way to the rail or he could lay off a little bit. I think I would try to just bump softly on the second rail. He didn't even bother. Yeah. Just got close enough. Made sure he didn't have too much angle. Good out there. Adjusted on the fly. Good shooting. Yeah, three, two. Just imagine if he had taken a couple more of those opportunities. Sanchez Reese so far has not done so much special work. Scratch on the break once, then didn't, didn't pocket a ball twice. Now I'm gonna wonder because twice Mika has been breaking from the center and okay, the first time he made a ball, but I just don't feel I'm <laughs> almost saying this every match, playing a, a ball or ten ball. I just feel from the center it has been so tough to make balls. It's tough to lay off with if that's the game plan that's got him to this point as well, right? So it's like, you know. He is going from the side rail. He heard you. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> tried to cut it. Tried to make that head ball on the side. Try again. Did he hit it a little thin, though? He did. I feel like he was trying to cut it, though, cut the head ball on the side. 
went really short. Well, and then again, he's left the rack just wide and wide open. The only good news is he has to start with solid, and the 2 4 could be a little right. tricky. There's a combo though, like you, it's it's a makeable combo if you get close to the long rail just next to it. But if you're gonna have it long, then I feel it could be tough. I feel like he might combo it just because there's no balls that naturally lead into it. He could elevate and try to get into it right now. This is an aggressive shot. Great shot. Oh, he's hit that so good. Yeah. And I like taking the three out, out as well. Just because the three is blocking the one. You could end with... Well, you can take four, two. Three. No. No, no, I don't like it. I'm going to take the three out now. And then f four, two, five, one, seven, eight. I think that would be my play. I don't mind being a little longer on the eight. Just the one is kind of connected with the seven. The longer he waits with taking the three ball out, the more interesting is going to be what he does with the one. I think he'll take it second. He went straight over there because he didn't like the seven. Which is all right. Then I would take it now. The good thing, though, after the break, especially the center of the table was so wide open. Yeah, he's got so a lot of room to move around. Even if he doesn't know where to go with the cue ball, he could just choose to go to the center of the table. Sure. So now he's going to go seven. Is it? Yeah, seven, four, five, one. The one is going to guarantee him being close to straight for the eight. Yeah, the one's the key ball for the eight. And then the five is on the same side, so I do like him to take that ball. He's played this well. Got a little straight here. A little nudge on the four, but... Then again, he doesn't need to be straight, just... He's got to come off the rail for the one anyways. Just wants to get the cue ball off the rail enough here. Cheated it that way. Looked like the cue ball was going into the rail there. Nicely played. Opening up a two rack lead again. Yeah, four two. Sanchez Ruiz. Hasn't been getting these opportunities uh, opportunities of his own break so far. Just just Mika's break. Yeah, no break and runs yet. Two mistakes by Mika, two dry breaks by Mika. That's how he's won his games. We have all the other men's final 32 matches going on right now as well. Chef Czech leads, leads Sufi 5-3. Kachi's up 6-0 on Malkade. Looks like Kachi's back. Both Kachi's are in the final 32. Cleto Kachi's 5-5 with Mario He.
Tyler Steyer is down 2-5 to Thomas Kaplan. Steyer played really well in, the, in stage one. Josh Filler, 5-1 ahead of Snagotsky. Hit it really well again, and nothing again. Funny from match to match how things can change. <laughs> oh, well, he hit the break there. Do you think he's crushing it as hard as he can? Yeah, it's close. It's 80%. 80, 80 yeah, I'm just wondering, could he push it a little bit more? I don't. I don't think it's the speed. It's just balls aren't lining up to the pockets for whatever reason. He's got an open table here. Okay, just. Interesting. I like to take the 15 out. 15, 11, 14, 12, 9. Probably this. Or could use the 15 as last ball for the 8 as well. But 9 ball plays good last for the 8. Yeah, I just wonder how to get nicely to that 9. There's if 15. you can go 15, 12, 14, 9, that would be ideal. But it's really tough to get that straight angle on the 12. Yeah, there's 15, 9, 14, 12. I might. It did come all the way down here. You see, I think he was trying to get straight on the 12 so he could go two reels on the 14, 9, 8. Right. Just drew a little bit too much. Yeah, you could see he wasn't really happy with his position there. He's playing more for the 12 than the 14. Oh, under hit this a bit. Yeah, I was thinking, what about he had just center ball stun off the rail, trying to get on the 12, and then if he go too far he still has the nine to come down a little bit could have played it a little bit more two-way now I feel he might bump the five he can still swing about he, this yeah that was the main thing if he goes around watch the seven no oh good boy wow this is ominous for Eminem when he gets these chances he's got to run out Never mind him and anyone that's playing Ruiz. If you're getting these extra chances, you've got to take advantage. Well, he did actually hit it still really firm, though. Like, he needs a good jump shot here. Yeah, it's not over yet. He's got a chance to, j he's got a chance to jump it in. Stretched out on the table too much. Lost the contact. Now this could be the momentum FSR is kind of waiting for. I mean, you're up 4-2. You know you haven't been making a ball on the break. Now your opponent is also not getting out. Could be pushing your confidence a little bit more. And if before you know it, you start making the balls on the break too. Yeah, he's owed a couple on the break. I think I would like to go seven three two one four six eight. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move the cue ball a little bit towards the eight, but I was gonna <laughs> say one four six and then three two, but then you will have to move the cue ball a little bit more getting to the eight. I think it's gonna shoot the three last. It's like a up table, down table move. You're coming into the angle of the eight that way.
This happens in straight pool as well. You know, you play a ball up table to come back into the angle of something that you're trying to break the rack with. Yeah, on the other side, you would expect almost any player left in this last 32 to be out from. Sure. Well, they'll find ball, a way. In hand. Yeah, they'll find a way when they're outnumbering their opponents and they have all those choices. Yeah, so it looks like Mika's gonna go for a little timeout. I think we're gonna have a break too here. Just a short little break. We're gonna be right back. Or not. So apparently Mika was not going to go for a timeout here. I just thought he was going to leave the arena. So we're going to just stay with you guys if you like it. So I mean, I think it would also be actually a good moment to take a yeah. timeout because coincidentally, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think it just fit the the moment. But maybe he feels that momentum is still with him, even though he's not using it. So he doesn't want to give that momentum away, but. I think it would just slow my, uh, slow Sanchez down as well. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a good spot to take a break. Cut it this time. Yeah, a lot more cuts on this break. If he, he yeah, if he missed the rack like that, he was trying to hit it like that. <laughs> At least he's changing. Looks like Mika's got to start with solids here. Six is going to be the toughest solid by far. Could use the three to try to bump into the 13. He's on the three, and he's opened up the rack in a way that he can shoot the six in the long pocket now. Yeah, I think if he can get straight on the six to the top left and just short draw for the two and after. Of course, he will still have to play good position. Ooh. Quite get there. And still make it. He can track the cue ball to the right. If you do, you have the two and the four over on the right side of the table. Mm. Pretty heavy he could angle. Go, he could go in between the 10 and the 11 and cut the two in the top left yeah can you slow it down though I think you gotta try it's a nice shot though good recovery shot here now he has a good angle to go up table now though four seven leave the four for the key ball yeah i mean you could take out the four but i think it's going to be just as difficult to go from the two up table than from the four Oh, Jeez. he's caught that too thick. Didn't well, leave him easy, but he left him a chance. He can he can make the 14 here. Yeah, I was going to say, this is going to be very interesting because that pocket is going to be blocked and well, most of the balls you would expect Sanchez to <laughs> yeah, go there. Yeah, they're so. all on the left side of the table. He's going to have to play a cup on the opposite side, maybe. Or he might shoot the 14 and try to catch the top side of the nine here push some balls already over to the bottom Ooh, oh look at that oh, that opens everything up <laughs> i am not too sure i don't think he was trying to Bump that too, but he's not going to complain about it for sure. I think he knew it was a possibility. It was unlikely he'd scratch. Great shot if he tried it. Yeah, 
He's got Eamon and talking to himself there. Going to leave the 11 down there by itself. That ball is going to lead into the 15, though. 15 leads into the 8. A little more angle in the 13, so just go this way. That's the thing also, though. If, if players miss the ball before the 8 or the last couple balls, then on this level... Pool players can run out in maybe six different ways, especially when they're spread like this. He, yeah. bumped, he from the moment he made the two, it was so wide open. Yeah, you just know he's a ninety-five percent favor to run the rack from there. Yeah, so six-two, and I think this is the best moment to go for a little break. We'll be right back. So here we are back. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, the Ferrari, is now up 6 2 He's over the up. Iceman. And guess, I mean, it's very easy to say. It's not like Sanchez has been playing great. It's just Mika leaving him open all the time. Yeah, he hasn't been making balls on the break. Randomly made three. Oh, he now. He put every single bit I he had in this break. I <laughs> saw what you mean. <laughs> this is what I was going at. Like, yeah. I think this is the way how people have to break if they desperately want to make balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Going to see cues flying out of bridge hands every, every second break. Interesting layout still, though, because... Most of the ball that were actually going to go up table, he made those. <laughs> the balls that left the rack, he made. Yeah. And a bunch didn't. The good thing, though, I think if he makes the four, run, roll in the four, shoot the one in the top left, and then shoot the three. Being straight on the five is going to be stop shot five and have the eight. I like that. As long as you can hold the cue ball rolling this four in. Playing a combo on the second shot, is that what you're saying? No, no, the, the one in the top left. Oh, one. sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just follow a little bit for the three in the bottom left. Yeah, it's a good play. Got it. And there's actually room on both sides of the table for the eight. Yeah, I just feel if you are straight on the five, then you're going to definitely movement. have the gap between the 15 or 11. Yep. Yeah. 
much time is running out though. Has to make a decision soon. Looks like he's going for that track. Got a little further on the one ball though, so might have to just bump the three ball soft. Yeah, try to bump it in a way where he can get straight in on it. I mean, stun run, just a hair. If you push the three to the rail, you still got the five. Yeah, I think he was trying to catch the three, just that little bump. It's going to make everything a little tougher, but... Still, if he ends up straight on the three, it's going to be the same thing if he was going to be, like, like he was going to be on the five. I think he still got that window. Yeah, the three's still in a good area where he can get that small angle on the eight. Key shot here. Little too much angle, but it's the angle that actually might help him. He'll just be closer to it. Yeah, or Follow now he just follows with a lot of left. Could have the eight in the left side pocket or in the bottom left. I might like that more because to hold this, it's a really small gap. It was just only nice if you were going to be straight on the three. Just moving the cue ball left. Oof. He's good. Pretty heavy cut angle here. Uh, mm. I think he's all right. This is for 7 2 here. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Oh, oh he's overcut it. Whoa. Well, here's Mika's opening. He's, I mean, he's going to take advantage here, but we'll see what he does on the break after this. First real mistake we've seen Ruiz make. Maybe a couple times he got a little off on a pattern, but. Yeah, really needs to make something happen here, though, Mika. I, yeah. I mean, you would favor him to get out here, but then after he really needs to get something going. He needs to get back to close to even or ideally better. Yeah, if he gets six four, six five, only this would already been putting some pressure on Sanchez. Couple ups. I think I like drawing. Have the 12 to the bottom left yeah. or the 11 in the side. I think he's trying to play the 12 there. Just hit less speed overall. Got in between here. Can draw straight back for the 13 here. Could also play the 13 into the 14. Yeah, I think he's all right just stopping the cue ball. I would say just everything except being straight, but then he got straight and he's gonna still cut the eight in. So yeah. it doesn't it didn't really matter however he was gonna end up. Well there's no doubt Mika's been offensive at certain points in the tournament if he's gotten this far. Just a question if he can summon it now. Yeah, six three. He'll be breaking and he just needs to clear maybe one or two racks to Mika's off for a short break here. We'll be right back.
so welcome back. Looks like Mika just wanted to leave the arena for a little bit. Reset for the home stretch here. Well, it's time to get to see some pack. I feel both of them actually have been breaking pretty decent, just in some kind of way, the balls have just not been wanting to go. Yeah. From the side rail, head on. Nice hit, but three seven. It's completely no. Completely elusive on the break this match for both of them. Hit them nice and square as well. Lots of movement. I mean, if you really want to be picky, you could say, well, there's still a smidge of draw on the cue ball, so maybe that takes away just that bit, but... Yeah, now the stripes are completely open. If you get straight on the 13, you got the 14. The 9 is connected, so you can go... 12, 11, 13, 14, 9. I mean, something like that is already pretty open. Could even go 12, 11, 13, 15, 10, 14, 9, 8. Like stuff like that. So many options here. I like to take the 11 away because it's far. You don't want to go back up all the way to come back down all the way. Yeah, I don't mind 10, 15 last. Yeah, even the combo, yeah, I mean, you take the 9, go, go the for the combo and yeah. leave the 10 in front, yeah. Combo's really manageable. Yeah, so I like 13, 14, 9, play the combo 10 into the 15, 10 is always going to stay in front of the corner, and then you're also next to the 8, so. Tight little stun follow there. Thinking about changing patterns here. Would be interesting though, just a stop shot on the 14 would be okay. Yeah. Then again, he could still go 14, 9, 10, 8. Like it's similar, yeah. Yeah. Just took care of that combo in case things went funny. Unlikely that they would have, but taking all precautions. See if he throws 100% at the next break. Yeah, like <laughs> the last break, he actually threw everything at it. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I think it's the way to go. I don't care at all about the cue ball at this point. Just keep it on the table. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> keep it at the table and just whack it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like Shane Van Boning is doing the same at <laughs> the other table. Yeah. Everybody is, <laughs> I see only everybody jumping on the break at oy, the moment. Oh, we just were seeing over there, just giving it. Didn't make one. So let's see here. I'd say that was all in. 
close. <laughs> it's actually a wired ball that went four rails. There's nothing end up kicking it out this time. It's not usually a ball that goes very often because there is four, like basically 14 balls and that one ball going all around. So usually catches a kiss, but. Yeah, it's the same track that the corner ball goes on in 10 ball, but there's so many more balls in eight ball that it doesn't go that often. Yeah. Now there is a combo and I might just swing already at 13. If you I go like for that. if you go for any any kind stripes or solids, you're not gonna be having many chances to open up those two. Yeah, you, you have to start with the combo here. And then I think you can go around the three center of the table, almost the area 12, 15, maybe the combo 9, 10. Can you slow the cue ball down enough if you do that? He actually has to back cut it just slightly. I mean, it's it's doable, but. It is missable on the thick side. That's what he's worried about right now. Well, if, if he has to, I, I'm going to go around and probably run in towards the 12. Sure. Because that way I'm most likely having the 9, 10. Or run into the 3, too. Oh. Just kind of let loose with the cue ball there. Not a bad play because he has so many stripes to get on. Did he get on one? Well, I was wondering with that 15 where the cue ball really was going to go after. And I don't think he's got one. Well, he's jumping this combo. I understand. But we should not be acting like it's a regular shot to shoot. Yeah. Obviously a confident jumper if he's going for the jump over a combo here. Well, he's got nothing else here, What's too. He doesn't like the combo, 15-12? Oh, there was jumping in the side, pardon me. I was looking at jumping in another ball. Good cue ball control. Just didn't really end up with something decent. Nine ball went two rails and bumped the 11 ball a little awkward. Great bump on the one ball too. That actually saved the whole rack for him. Now he's back in line to get out from here. Of course, it's still a little tricky to get to the nine, but I think I'm going to go top right and then go one real up table for the nine in the bottom left corner. I see that. He's a confident potter though, and he's going to go for the nine here. Draw, try to draw back for the 12, onto the two maybe. If he didn't get on the 12, he's on the 15. That's what happened. Maybe thick enough on the 12 that he can still hold it. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. Well, that was also... The main thing we were worried about is the chances Mika had in the beginning was to actually just hang in this match because Sanchez was not breaking any balls on the break. Now he starts making <laughs> balls on the break. Yeah. His lead has been growing rapidly. The chances are over. <coughs> he might get one more, but he's going to have to string some racks together to make up the difference now. Yeah. I think this is the perfect moment to thank our sponsors and partners for this event. So we would love to thank the Predator Group, 
gericht werd. Billiard Sport Academy, Jasmine Ushan en Kamui Brand. En natuurlijk met de lokale support van Klagenfurt Tourism en de regio van Carinthia. Dit is mijn derde jaar in row being hier. Zoals altijd, ik het genoeg. Dus bedankt je allemaal voor de supporting de Pro Billiard Series. En ja, voor alle viewers, zorg dat je ze uit. Oh, almost made a 10, hung up, still made a 2. Finally made a ball on the side. D8 eight. on the break, so he wins, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> CPA stuff here. A APA stuff. No. It's not a win. He has the option, though, to either break again or have it respotted, but Rats obviously he's going to play, yeah. Yeah. Interesting layout. For solids, the four is a little bit annoying. Stripes is kind of all right, but the 13 needs some work. If he gets on the three in the side, he'll be on a stop angle for the four. Yeah, if the four goes to the bottom left. I that's what I was, the last few, it looked a little tight. Just not too sure. What he could also play. The 312 combo making a little bit more room to get on the 13. Four goes to the bottom left. Just have to get pretty good on the three. Oh well then he can cut the seven in and get straight on the three. Yeah, that's what he's gonna go for. Got perfect. Yeah. So let's see, Joshua Filler won his last 32 match. 10-1 with Mateusz Snigocki. Convincing win. Must have ran a bunch. Abdullah Al Youssef is 6-5 leading with Max Lechner. John Mora was down 6-3, I believe, with Hijikata Hayato. But it's now 6 each. Good match. Chang Yulung and Chang Yun Lin playing each other in the last 32. What are the odds? 6-4, Cheng Yu Lung. Okay. Mario He leading Claudio Kachi, 7-6, close match. Eklund Kachi on the other side is leading 8-2 over David Alcade. Looks like Kachi's back. Yeah. And I just heard Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is now on the hill. 9 3. So we're gonna nip out for a little bit. We'll be right back, guys. So here we are back, score now 9-3, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz actually starting to break a run a couple here. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not ever going to say Mika Eminen has no chance anymore, but it's going to be extremely difficult for him to at least get some pressure on this guy now. He's going to have to get back to the table first, <laughs> let it all out there again. Didn't work this time though. Watch the follow through on this one. We'll get a replay here. <laughs> so one last chance for Mika. I think you have to start with the 12 running into the one, having the 13. 
There's six into the 13 as well. Yeah. Maybe the other. Oh, oh, all oh he caught a double kiss. Yeah, in so many ways that could have been a lot better than that. Just he caught exactly there the double kiss. Yeah, maybe hit it a little hard, a for, little hard. for the sake of argument, but unlucky for it to turn out like that. Stop pattern out here. Yeah, it's going to go to the nine here. 39. Again, they're so spread. Like, <laughs> there's maybe four ways I can already mention to run this out. It's just. And you can see by the pace he's shooting at. He just knows he's going to kind of adjust I mean, on the fly here. 11, 10, and 10, and then 15 side, 9 to the corner, and 8. Got short on the angle here, but he'll be okay. Yeah. Well, looks like our defending champion, FSR, is going to be playing the last 16 tomorrow. Yeah, there it is. So, Francisco Sanchez reaches through. Last 16, beats Mika Eminen. And this was Eric Hurlifsen and myself, Tim the writer. We would love to see you guys tomorrow morning. We will start again at 10 a.m. We got the World Juniors. And we have the World Women Temple Championship going on alongside with the World Eight Ball Men. So, big day tomorrow, guys. Be, be sure you tune in again. Thank so. you and good night.